We walk back and forth in a jailhouse every day. It's called your doorways, tent cities, bus benches, metal chairs in the emergency room waiting to be seen. It's Main Street outside the razor wire plantation in a cell called Houselessness and Poverty. Yeah, from the jailhouse to the po house. Teetering on a colonized definition of safety. From ugly laws to conservatorship. We can barely survive one day without the theft of our belongings, polis calls, and 5150s. Me, daughter of a houseless single mama, sleeping on street corners, cars, and not really public parks in this stolen indigenous territory. It's enough to drive anyone completely crazy. It took my mama, unable to unhinge from that deep well of trauma. So what's the answer? You don't want to see me. You would like to walk down the street cloaked in your American lie that doesn't ever include me. Yeah, we are political prisoners outside the razor wire plantations. Us po' folks are never free. Not free from our mind demons, the abuse we can't get out our mind no matter the quantity of psychopharmacology. I hold my mama in this space, rolling over her torture daily. My life is political. My prison is personal, she would always say. My struggle, our struggle, is poetry, and I can't escape these walls inside my mind, so whatever, I can't ever be free. Today's podcast from a poverty scholar is dedicated to Memphis, ruthless radio poverty scholar who you heard starting this uh, podcast out, and all us poverty scholars still on these stolen indigenous streets struggling with new laws and what I call legislations to make it illegal to be seen. So today's podcast from a poverty scholar is also dedicated to the new legislation called conservatorship. And the way that it's going to institutionalize the incarceration and the death of us poor folks every day in America KKK. So conservatorship, let me take you on a little his story lesson to give you some framework for those of you who maybe don't struggle and and uh, study poverty scholarship, a poor people led theory across Mama Earth. Let me take you to some of the his story of genocide. Beginning with the turn of the century, ugly laws. Shout out to my sister Junebug, to brother Leroy, 
laws that made it illegal to be unhoused and disabled in public, legislations which were rooted in the pauper laws brought here with the original, the OG stealing fathers. Oh yeah, that's right, sorry, founding fathers. In the beginning of the occupation of this indigenous land, legislations that literally incarcerated people for being poor, for not having money to pay illegal taxes to the rich, rich and or for having outstanding debt. A reality which is still exists in many cities today. Shout out to our sister Tracy Bell Borden and all the warriors trying to fight this uh, money bail state. These violent anti-poor people laws were an extension of indentured servitude and the enslavement, rape, murder, and land theft of first peoples and stolen African peoples. But then as you travel down the violent path of paper violence, politricksters, and what I affectionately call legislations, you end up with the conservatorship program. Adopted into law across AmeriClan and completely related to the supposed care, read forced treatment, of disabled children and adults and elders, supposedly unable to care for ourselves. Without you, there would be no me, said Scott Sloan about his 97-year-old mama, grandmama, domestic worker, a beautiful African sister who struggled in the plantation nation of AmeriClan for centuries. And then the Alameda County Conservatorship Program. Conserved, read incarcerate, Beatrice Sloan, Scott Sloan's mama, and stole the one asset she had worked for her entire life to attain a little wooden home in North Oakland. Why do I know this? Because Poor Magazine been fighting, reporting, and supporting on the theft, genocide, destruction, land lording, and scam lording, gentrifying, and destroying of poor people, of people of color, of indigenous people since our beginning in 1996, Ibaye Mama D, without whom there be no me. We stood by the Sloan family for two years in 2002 and 2003, trying to fight this conservatorship program, trying to make sure the family didn't end up with nothing. Because in that particular case, the conservatorship demanded that Beatrice Sloan be put in an elder care home, an elder ghetto as we call it, refused to allow her family to take care of her and then charged back against her home and her equity. And so they stole everything she had, charged back against her home and her equity for the price of putting her in the elder ghetto in the end of the day, leaving the entire multi-generational family houseless and causing the death alone of Beatrice Sloan. Like most of these colonizer laws, the conservatorship laws enable and support the buying, selling, stealing, and pillaging of poor people's assets, bodies, and homes. These laws are rooted in Western heteropatriarchal ageist ableist diagnoses of mental and physical health, while at the same time they provide an ongoing population and need for a multi-million dollar industry of elder ghettos, group homes, nursing homes, mental hospitals, etc. And through the conservatorship laws already on the books, poor elders like Beatrice Sloan and their families, lose the only assets they ever had, lose their abilities to take care of themselves and their elders, and end up owing the state thousands of dollars, which follows them to the other side of the spirit journey. 
So now in 2018, in addition to the hundreds of legislations already in place, which make it illegal to sit, stand, sleep, lie, lean, put a backpack down, put up a tent, or eat while houseless in cities across Khalifa Saslan, we have a new one. A new legislation that takes the criminalization, incarceration, and harassment of poor people to a new violent sci-fi movie level. And oddly, just like the ugly laws, which worked with the settlement houses, a.k.a. the early saviors and anti-social workers, this law is supported by a neoliberal politricsters and even so-called progressive politricsters like San Francisco's mayor who claim this is the solution to the homeless problem because we ain't people anymore. We just a code, a title, and a problem. And just like Care Not Cash of the early 2000s put into law by politricster Gavin Newsom, this is another way for the state to steal, a.k.a. conserve, poor people's resources. Because once you are conserved, every asset, belonging, thing, or dollar you have is seized by the state. Ensuring that not only will you be incarcerated for being seen, we will also be unable to survive outside of the institution after they let us out of their conservatorship. Like my brother Leroy Moore says in the struggle and black uh, struggle of Crip Hop Nation, this law doesn't even expand or takes apart the Lanterman Act, which actually was a powerful thing to help get resources to disabled folks. So what do we know now? Since we've been reporting and supporting on these kinds of genocidal moves against poor people's lives, our poor and unhoused bodies, our disabled bodies, our indigenous bodies are continually under attack. Our bodies and belongings are equated with trash and we are incarcerated and harassed for the sole act of being unhoused in this stolen territory. And on top of all of that, now we have yet another legislation that it makes it illegal to be poor in this stolen land. Stop. 